So the story goes back in about 2013, um, I was researching the creation of a municipal bond agency, which was a plan hatched out of the Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea for councils to issue their own debt um, rather than borrowing directly from government via the Public Works Loan Board. So I found out that HSBC were advising Kensington and Chelsea on the creation of the bond agency. And around the same time, uh, US author Matt Taibbi, who wrote for Rolling Stone, was writing about a scheme um, involving HSBC and other Wall Street banks who conspired to rig municipal bond markets in the US. Um, the article was called The Scam Wall Street Learned from the Mafia. So I was sort of thinking, this is interesting, you know, here's HSBC um, a year after the Mexican money laundering fine, another enormous big scandal involving municipal government and here is HSBC advising a local authority Kensington and Chelsea about setting up a similar scheme in the UK which obviously immediately triggered my alarm bells. A couple of the people responsible for driving that scheme were Merrick Cockle who was the leader of RBKC at the time and the finance director who is a guy by the name of Tom Fairhead uh, the husband of Rona Fairhead. Um, so they were sort of the driving force behind the municipal bond agency um, coming out of RBKC. So following on from this, I decided to request the councillor's declaration of interest or conflict of interest forms, which record, you know, gifts, hospitality, um, property ownings in the borough, that sort of thing. Anything which basically could conflict with their role as elected local government members. And so I sent in... FOIs to RBKC and a couple of months later I got a, a response regarding Tom Fairhead and it sort of it transpired that he'd received um, gifts, hospitality from a number of financial institutions including Goldman Sachs, UBS and interestingly thinking about the role of his wife um, Pearson who run the FT where she used to work and HSBC, where at the time, this is 2007-08, uh, Rona Fairhead was the um, non-executive director of HSBC and chaired their um, audit and risk committee. So effectively what happened was HSBC broke its own rules to you know, uh, bestow gifts on Tom Fairhead while his own wife was head of group risk and audit um, and was supposed to be ensuring that HSBC was complying with internal policy. So another sort of enormous black mark against um, Rona Fairhead's kind of tenure at HSBC. The council claimed to have lost or destroyed all the other forms for Tom's. The one that they gave me is for 2007-08. Um, forms for other years were not disclosed and similarly for Merrick Cockle um, they claimed to have lost or destroyed his forms as well. Um, so I guess this raises a, a series of questions regarding you know the extent to which um, lobbying, gifts and hospitality play a role within local government, the extent to which gifts and hospitality may have played a role in the subsequent choice by RBKC to bring on HSBC and his advisor on the Municipal Bond Agency project which was pursued by the Local Government Association 2014-15. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's a series of questions here which you know have been put to Kensington and Chelsea, and to both um, the BBC and HSBC while Rona Fairhead was still an employee there, and in each case um, those institutions have you know refused to provide any more information regarding you know what these sort of gifts of hospitality were, and whether this was kind of a one-off or it was sort of part of a a trend of um, you know basically schmoozing local government employees to attain some form of financial benefit. I also subsequently found out that uh, Tom Fairhead was in charge of the council tax kickback scheme, um, which basically involved handing back council tax um, paid to the council to local taxpayers. Um, how this sort of came about in two thousand eight or nine. In the wake of the banking crisis, Kensington and Chelsea devised this policy of handing back sort of £50 council tax to residents in a sort of attempt to stimulate spending in the borough. 
you know, to go out, blow the money in shops, spend it on local charities, that sort of thing. So initially it was designed as a, a temporary kind of measure um, to implement in the wake of the crisis. And again, in terms of who was responsible, the scheme was sort of devised by Merrick Cockle and Tom Fairhead, who was the uh, Director of Finance at RBKC at the time. Um, they jointly devised the scheme, uh, which was initially piloted in 2009, and then widened and extended to offer um, larger sort of kickbacks up to you know 100 pounds at one point in the uh, advance of an election, which were increasingly kind of targeted to wealthier RBKC residents. So in some cases, it appears you know poor residents, residents in social housing, etc. Um, you know these sorts of residents did not receive any um, reimbursement for any council tax paid. And after the Grenfell Tower fire of this year, um, you know, you're read, reading papers and uh, stories in the paper regarding, you know, residents beginning to kind of label this blood money because they can begin to see the impact between, um, you know, council tax being reimbursed, not being spent, and RBKC skimping and saving hundreds or thousands of pounds on um, fire safety and building safety measures, which could have saved dozens of lives. Basically what happened between 2009 and 2017, um, Kennington and Chelsea slashed council tax to such an extent, um, around about 20% overall, um, it reduced the council's income over this period by £140 million. So, you know, thinking that the Greenfield Tower refurb cost about £10 million, significant amount of money, and that £140 million represents around a third of all the money lost by RBKC since austerity began in 2010 as a result of council um, cuts. And it's worth pointing out that those cuts imposed by the council through cutting council tax levels and offering these rebates were entirely voluntary and as a result of RBKC policy. So this has nothing to do with central government austerity. Um, it's clearly indicative of Conservative councils voting to slash their own council staff and spending on services, and is evidence of um, you know this sort of ideological motive to to slash the state, um, regardless of the impact that may have on on local residents. Firstly, it's a arms length management organisation or ELMO. Um, so these are sort of pseudo-public, pseudo-private um, legal entities set up to manage um, infrastructure assets um, on behalf of a local authority but not directly controlled by it. So it gives a sort of a look of authenticity um, of something kind of attached to a public institution while being basically independent from it. So what you see is um, the movement of councillors, um, internal staff from Kensington and Chelsea into the TMO. Um, one of the sort of first uh, employees and certainly the kind of first chief executive of the Casey TMO was none other than Tom Fairhead. So his company's house um, record but states that he was the chief executive officer of KCTMO between 1995 and 1998 and basically what happened was the conservative government at the time uh, passed this right to manage legislation that gave councils the right to palm off their housing assets to an arms length organization like a, a TMO um, so therefore progressively the, the housing stock built up by RBKC was transferred to KCTMO and basically what happened at this time um, those existing assets the um, you know the housing stock was refinanced by the TMO typically using uh, bank finance rather than government finance so again this is a, um, a bung for the City of London rather than using cheaper government finance you use expensive bank finance and expand the balance sheets of these City of London firms the other sort of key point to make here is Elmo's and housing associations now are almost entirely unregulated. So um, in 2015, um, Eric Pickles shut down the Audit Commission, which was a, a government body which audited local authorities and quangos, including Elmo's and housing associations. 
And so basically what that now means is there's no effective external scrutiny of these organisations. Uh, you have councillors, um, individuals allied to a local authority taking on management roles within these arms management organisations, um, managing huge amounts of public money and often being paid quite significant salaries on top of their um, you know standard kind of councillor wage. And they're operating with almost complete impunity. So these Elmos and Quangos are not subject to FOI. Um, they're not externally audited apart from, you know, by the likes of KPMG, EY, um, what I would sort of term a, a largely a soft audit. And with the loss of the audit commission, you don't anymore have these sort of thematic studies where they go in and look at issues which might have included, you know, things like sort of fire safety or um, building egress, the sorts of things which might have potentially picked up issues at somewhere like Grenfell ahead of the disaster. I mean, as a consequence of this, what we see is increasing waste. So you're spending much more money um, to use a, a TMO or an ELMO model of service delivery than you would um, directly managing assets via local authority. And there's several reasons for this one of which is a significant increase in the cost of borrowing. So um, Helia Ibrahimi for Channel 4 News looked at um, Greenfield Tower and found KCTMO were paying interest rates as high as 10% on billions of pounds of borrowing. And she found that based on sort of £58 million pound annual income for KCTMO, 13 million of that, or 22% of the overall revenue, was spent on interest payments alone. So basically we're seeing large sums of money transferred from public coffers to financial firms who have been leveraging up on what were previously social housing assets but increasingly are being privatised and certainly with new regulations such as right to buy we're seeing again the transfer of social housing stock from housing associations and Elmos to the private rented market. Thank you.